Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody so hope you are enjoying the course so today we are going to discuss about the structure of antibody okay so in structure of antibody we already know what is antibody in uh, previous classes we are going to discuss the structure of a typical antibody molecule why i am talking typical antibody molecule you will understand later on see in antibody there are two types of polypeptide chain one the big one which is green here okay which is uh, the green one is the bigger one and another is the yellow one the small one okay so the big chain we call heavy chains and the small chain we call light chain depending on the molecular weight so if you see this picture i mean it's the cartoon of the antibody molecule you can see the two heavy chains are connected with two disulfide bond and one heavy chain and light chain is connected with a disulfide bonds okay so immunoglobulin molecules are composed of two types of protein chain one is heavy another is light okay heavy chains and light chains so two heavy chains two light chains compose antibody molecule which looks like y english letter capital y the same picture little different i you can understand from the color not only the color you see there are domains are named here you see both light chain and heavy chain both light chain and heavy uh, light chain and heavy chain the upper part is red and rest of the part is blue why this red? Red here you see it is written V L and V H. This red is indicated the variable region because in antibody this region is responsible for antigen binding. Okay. So, this region is responsible for antibody antigen binding and as there are so many variety of antigens we should have a different antibody which can interact with different antigens. So, this region is responsible for antigen binding. So, this part must be maximum variable. So, this and it is true if you find two different antibody you will find the blue region is almost similar, but the red region is different. Okay. So, that is why this domain and the, uh, if this is a polypeptide chain or this is the polypeptide chain this is the n terminal and this is c terminal. In case of light chain this is n terminal this is c terminal. So, the n terminal region of heavy chain and n terminal region of light chain basically uh, determines the antigen binding specificity and this is the most variable region. So, both the cases it is called variable region is written here and it is designated by V H that means heavy chain variable region and V L stands for heavy light chain variable region and same way the blue region is known as constant region. Okay. Blue region is known as constant region and constant region also if you see there are three domain in case of heavy chain and one constant region in case of light chain. So, constant region of light chain is designated as C L and heavy chain constant region or domain is designated as C H. Now, there are three domain it is called C H 1, C H 2 and C H 3. C stands for constant, L for light, C constant, H for heavy and 1, 2, 3 is 3 different domain. So, V L, C L, V H, C H 1, C H 2, C H 3 and this one such unit are joined together and two such units are joined together by the disulfide bond. But it is not as straightforward that what we see last time. If you see carefully, this is actually the structure. So, it is not just like two strand is just linked here in this region like that. 
it is basically they are cross like this. Okay. So, they are cross like that and two light chain are going to join here. So, if you see the three dimensional figure it is just not not planar it is kind of cross crossing each other and here you see this two heavy chains the violet and the yellow they cross each other and light chains are in two different ways. So, if you see this thing it will do like this. So, it is a crossing here and it can have two binding site at two positions and this is and this structure whatever the cartoon drawn here it is derived from the crystal structure discovered I mean the crystal structure after the discovery or identification of the crystal structure. So, this is a cartoon of the crystal structure and here the hinge CH 1 CH 2 everything is mentioned what you can uh, correlate with the previous uh, figures and these hexagonal things are carbohydrates. All the antibodies are highly or heavily glycosylated and there are variety of glycosyl I mean different antibody have a different glycosylation pattern and this glycosylation is also important for the effector function because some antibody is more uh, favorable for complement action some antibodies are more favorable for opsonization. Okay. So, and uh, this sugar is very important and but for this particular uh, cartoon we should remember that the constant region or sometimes in the variable region also the it is glycosylated. Okay. So, this is the uh, cartoon of uh, antibody structure based on the crystal structure. But now, if I see or if we want to see how this domain are organized according to protein level structure. So, the same domain if you see this this is the antibody this is the antibody and this antibody 2 domain this is the variable domain and this is the constant domain of the light chain and in this case these two if you see more detail what we will see. What we will see is that this particular say the variable region of the light chain variable region of the light chain is composed of mostly the anti parallel beta sheet anti parallel beta stands or beta sheets of formation okay. and there are lots of loops. So, variable region of the light chain if you see there are two part in this cartoon blue and red here this blue and red is mostly the beta stands red indicating the red zone of the here and blue indicating the blue zone of here. Similarly, if you see the constant domain of light chain okay, the constant domain of the light chain the C L is also very similar it also has mostly beta stand and green and yellow is indicating the green and yellow part of this cartoon are beta stand and rest of the loop. And if you make them straight arrangement of the beta stand how it looks like you see they are anti parallel one goes this way another this way then this 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 and this pattern we see these two domain they are very much looks alike okay is the anti parallel beta sheets okay and not only that if you see the heavy chain they are variable region their ch1 ch2 ch3 are very very similar so the domains of immunoglobulin molecule are similar structure which is mostly constituted of anti parallel beta sheets and some loops so what are the loops i will come later so before that uh, just uh, for now that all the domains are having similar structure. Okay. So, uh, summarizing each domain are similar structure there are one variable domain in light chain and one variable domain in heavy chain one constant domain in light chain and three constant domain uh, in heavy chain. And before the molecular biology or the recombinant te technology discovered or the all the techniques now we know we can do many things now we can know the sequence we can manipulate the sequence but before knowing all this technology or all this information um, prog progression of all this information what it was known that the structure of antibody okay i'm not going to go detail how it is discovered but two very interesting uh, thing I, will, I mean just uh, interesting enzyme I will show you that all antibodies all varieties of antibodies can 
be cleaved in a functionally distinct fragments. Okay, antibody molecule in general, okay, some peptidic cleavage site is very much conserved. For example, if you treat the antibody with peptidic uh, proteolytic enzyme papain, proteolytic enzyme papain, it has only one site in each chain in the hinge region of the antibody. Okay, this is a hinge region of the antibody. So, as a result, so per antibody molecule there are two sites, it will be cleaved into three equal size fragment. One will contain the variable region and one constant region which is called FAB F A B. F stands for fragment antigen binding, fragment antigen binding. So, if it cuts here there are two same size FAB is coming. So, there will be in antibody there are wh how, what is the valency of antibody with, with respect to a binding to antibody antigen 2. So, one antigen anti one antibody molecule like this antibody molecule can bind two antigen in using two antigen binding site, but if you cut here. So, each FAB will have only one antigen binding and if you see this F C stands for fragment crystallizable. This fragment is crystallizable very careful. Why I am saying very careful because most of the time if we ask the question during viva or any other places what is F C stands for it is a fragment constant no. Though it contain only constant domain, but the F C stands for fragment crystallizable no constant part is here. So, fragment antigen binding which can bind, but it is a single valent it can valence is 1 it can bind only 1 antigen and here it is F C fragment crystallizable. So, neither FAB does not have the effector function, but effector function is mostly are controlled by this F C portion of the antibody. Another enzyme called pepsin you see the, all these red arrows are the cut side. So, it cut multiple side, but it is towards the C terminus end of this disulfide part. So, as a result if you use the pepsin it breaks the antibody into several pieces basically F C cut into multiple pieces, but FAB the fragment antigen binding is joined together because the disulfide bond is still there. So, it name as FAB A B prime 2 because it has 2 FAB together. Okay. So, its valence is 2 just like antibody after cutting with the proteolytic enzyme either pepsin or papain they do not lose the antigen binding capacity they can still bind antigen okay. and many techniques or many kind of uh, technology during uh, our research we use either FAB or whole, whole antibody or FAB prime. Okay. So, FAB to prime and this is of no use we cannot use this for anything, but it gives multiple pieces. So, these two are why you are saying so there that means this proves that in general antibody molecule has some uniqueness, but the very few protein you will find like this uh, you take the antibody from any source okay, whether uh, uh, mouse or human and you cut with papain you will get the re this result. So, it is highly this particular proteolytic cleavage sites are very much conserved and during this protein analysis um, the structure of antibody like presence of heavy chain light chain how many are there how they link was the antibody structure basic structure of antibody was known long before all this crystallization and uh, recombinant technology is come in our hand. So, what this hinge region is doing hinge region in the antibody give I already told in the uh, basic during the basic concept uh, classes the hinge region gives them the flexibility. So, it is not rigid if it is fixed like that it cannot go like this it has to bind if one bind uh, if this one this hand binds one antigen it other antigen should be in this range it cannot go, but here if it is flip between this side it have more flexibility to bind antigen which you can see 
So, this see this kind of formation can happen this is just a cartoon like this is the red is a haptin or a small antigen which has two similar unit and if you give this uh, haptin and antibody you mix this kind of triangular structure or this kind of square structure of 90 degree between this two uh, fab and uh, two fab 90 degree can be there. Okay. So, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, formation is possible only because hinge region is there. So, how we know that this kind of formation is happening this kind of formation is also can be seen in the electron micrograph you can see it is 300,000 times magnified image. If you see that there is a triangular formation this is the same mixture like haptin um, repeat and uh, antibody mixture if you incubate and give the take the image in electron micrograph you can see a square like formation you can see um, a triangular formation you can see some straight line straight line means two antibody just one antigen two antibody together. Okay. So, two antibody in straight line. So, triangular and then uh, square then linear all possible combinations are possible. So, this is telling that antibody hinge region makes the antibody binding capacity more flexible and they can reach the antigen at different angle also. Because it is not that one antigen binding site attached and other antigen binding site is remain idle or not doing anything. So, maximum possible way it can try and bind to the antigen. So, this is for your information we will see again uh, in different time point what they are doing depending on the constant region depending on the constant region of heavy chain antibody or immunoglobulin molecule can be divided into five subtypes we call it isotype i s o isotypes okay antibody molecule in human and in mouse we can divide into five isotype what are those one is immunoglobulin m immunoglobulin d immunoglobulin g immunoglobulin a and immunoglobulin e if you see it is I mean in the uh, cartoon in the bottom you see there are different we actually what we are discussing or telling you the um, structure or explaining the structure is IgG. Okay. If you see carefully all these five slight difference you can see let me start from right to left. Okay. Let me start here see if you see Ig compare IgA and IgG you see they are very similar the number of domains are similar they have hinge region, but the pattern of the disulfide bond it is in, in, this is the number here is 1 here is 2 and if you see the disulfide bond the location because disulfide bond form between 2 cysteine residue. Okay, right? So, this location of this um, uh, disulfide bond is different in this case IgD are very similar to IgA, but why what makes them difference why they are different not only the structure actually what happened the amino acid sequence of this constant regions are different. Okay. So, if you group them depending on the similarity in the amino acid sequence of constant region you can find there are five types and automatically there will be five subtypes and it was named isotypes A I G A D E G M. Okay. But this is not only their sequence is different, but the number of domains are also different. In this case of I G D, I G G and I G A the number of domains are same, but if you see I G M and I G E one domains they have extra. Okay. They have four constant domains C H 1, C H 2, C H 3, C H 4 right which is not here this is C H 1, 2, 3 here. Okay. So, four domain this is different and if you see even more carefully both I G M and I G E they do not have the hinge region. Okay. They do not have hinge region. So, their flexibility is little less in comparison to I G G and I G A. What difference you can see? I can see some thing else too. I can see the number of glycosylation 
if you see this is not exactly representative of the number if you all these hexagons are the sugars number of glycosylations patterns are different they are not in the same location not only that IgE and IgM heavily glycosylated in comparison to IgG and IgA right. The location is different even the variable region is also glycosylated which is not present anywhere else. So, this particular slide or the cartoon is saving 5 isotypes IgM, D, G, A and E are different in their constant domain, their glycosylations are different, their hinge is not present in all of them, glycosylation amount of glycosylation or degree of glycosylation is different between them, although their difference I mean their function is very much different that we will see later. Like IgE is mostly responsible for allergy, I am not telling all 5 just to give you an example, IgE is mostly responsible for allergy. Okay. IgG is, is responsible for most of the adaptive immunity that we see and IgM is the first antibody that synthesized after any infection. So, if you remember my basic concept class the primary immune response and secondary immune response where I told that two point of difference one point was it primary response is uh, more lag period or taking more time to initiate, secondary response is quicker, amount is different and the third difference I am adding now or the third things that I am going to add now in that particular curve is the primary response most of the antibody is IgM type. Okay, along with that point one is I am increasing IgM is the antibody of primary response, but in secondary response most of the antibody or antibody present in the secondary response are mostly IgG. Okay. So, this is so antibody structure very briefly I told you and these are the subtypes. So, antibody molecule what the constant region is doing, what the variable region is doing what variable region which part all whole domain is variable because do we need the whole variable domain to be different in case of each different antibody because if there are 5 different antigen there should be 5 different antibody molecules and variable region is responsible for interacting with the antigen and whether all 5 different antibodies will have completely different variable region no. Okay. So, before that I uh, let me introduce two more terminology. Okay, this is not exactly related to the antibody structure, but I think I mean this is a good time to introduce you because it uh, may take uh, you may find it many places and different times it is going to uh, be very useful. One is affinity. Okay, what is in general affinity? Affinity between two proteins are what? Affinity between two proteins means they are specificity I mean their interaction um, how good they interact. Okay. More affinity means they, are, they will interact better. In mathematically what we see that the measure of strength of interaction between an epitope you know what is epitope and antibodies antigen binding site. So, mathematically what is that the association constant is how many antigen antibody are together that concentration divided by individual antibody concentration and antigen concentration. Okay, but uh, whether I uh, just telling you A B is the short form or abbreviation of antibody and A G is the short form of antigen. Okay. So, K A the association constant is the concentration of antigen antibody complex divided by antibody free antigen free antibody and free antigen concentration. So, more the numerator value of numerator is more means better association. So, more number of antigen and antibody are associated together more association is there that means better the affinity. And as antibody has as antibody has two valency. So, it is possible that one antibody 
can find only one antigen and it is also possible that one antigen find two antigen. Okay. So, in that case antigen antibody complex may be it is happen it is a reversible it is a non covalent interaction it is not a covalent interaction. So, what happen if this is the antigen okay, uh, antibody and if it binds one antigen here another antigen here. Okay. So, at any po time point if you see whether the antibody is completely free or antigen bound form. So, may be this is free, but this is still bound another time it binds, but this is free. Okay. So, what will happen the total binding or the total binding of the antigen antibody or total binding of antibody towards the antigen may be should not be compared with this only one bound form. Okay. So, this term is called avidity. Okay. One antigen bind together, so total binding will be more. So, overall strength of antigen antibody complex depends on what is the valency, okay. what valency of antigen is there clear. So, this is antigen antibody uh, interaction we normally say affinity high affinity antibody means high specificity antibody and high avidity means when avidity is very much important in some cases we may not need now during the discussion of antibody structure, but avidity is important some other time. So, I just introduce you the two terminology if you have any um, question about the antibody affinity and avidity there are enough number of I mean if you search net you will find it that what is this mean. Okay. So, and this affinity or avidity depend uh, not the avidity the affinity depends on where affinity depends affinity of antibody depends on um, affinity of antibody depends on only this region. If you, if you see this picture we have seen before right the localized region of hyper variable sequence what happened actually this is the whole antibody this is even a simpler form of drawing antibody heavy chain light chain all uh, merge together. So, this thing is half heavy chain and half light chain. Okay. So, the this part is a variable region and if you see carefully even within the variable region also not the whole variable region is interacting only the upper surface of the antibody which contribute a very small part of the variable region actually interacting with the epitope. Okay. So, if I have 10 different antibodies against 10 different antigen if this region is different then it is enough we do not have to be different in different anti I mean uh, different uh, antibody should not be different all variable regions should be completely different. If I go to this part you see most of the part is the structural part it is basically the framework. So, lot of beta strands are there they are holding this they are they are basically doing like this structure and this upper surface upper surface is interacting with the if this is the one domain if you see all the other fingers and pump are the antibody I mean the beta stand part. So, this upper part is doing this and this loop. Okay. So, if this form is just like a loop. So, these loops these loops are the exposed part okay. these strands are making just the framework this um, uh, maintaining the structure of the protein in that part and this loop which is exposed. Okay. So, this loop which we will see later that this loop are the only place which is interacting with antigen. So, if you see this three this three loop of epitope antigen and this is the part of antibody which is interacting which is nothing but all these loops what we see in that domain structure. So, this finally, the loop of the outer loop of the antibody and epitope these two are interacting and these two interaction how good it is depending on that how specific and how what is better affinity or lower affinity will depend on that. It is a non covalent interaction. Okay. And it follows all the rules of protein protein interaction because most of the cases antigens are protein and antibody definitely by now you know it is protein. 
Okay. So, how this what is the structure of this loop region and how it varies which part it is how big it is what is their length we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.